Hi, I'm Roger Margolis at OSCON in Portland 2018. I'm here with Andy Brown from Home Depot. And Andy, we're going to talk a little about open source. Sounds great, and, Roger. Um, what's going on at Home Depot. And you know, Home Depot technology uses lots of different, I'm sure, techniques mm -hmm. and technologies and strategies. Um, when you encounter a new challenge, mm -hmm. how does open source play in the decision making? Yeah, I think right now, definitely, Home Depot's mindset is w as we look to open for uh, open source first. Whenever we've got a new problem, we actually started uh, ten years ago. We converted all of our store systems um, to an open source platform, so Linux and Tomcat. And since then, you know, obviously things have progressed. But we we whenever we're faced with new problems. That's where that's our starting point. That's where we start uh, to look for solutions and see what would be applicable there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we've you know our design practices are, are customer back, heavy UX um, influence, et cetera. But when it comes to the technical inner workings, uh, we leverage open source quite a bit. So, how do you determine the the build or buy decision? I know it's kind of a classic decision people need to make. Yeah, I will tell you, it, so that's changed as well. I've been with the company for 20 years, and I think when I was to reflect back, we probably used to do a lot more purchase uh, than we do now. Uh, when, when we, where we sit now, there are a lot of solutions that we look at from the purchase standpoint that would really require customization to meet where we're trying to take the business. And we view technology as a differentiator. And so we are rarely making the buy call these days. We build about 90% of our software in-house. That's great. You're a pretty big company. We are, <laughs> we <laughs> are. Got, uh, and I was surprised that the 90% of the population is within 10 miles of a store, which means you've got a lot of gigantic stores. Mm -hmm. um, with regard to scale, that must be one of your kind of critical issues. Um, how do you handle? Um. You're, you're exactly right. Scale is, is one of our issues. I think one of the other use cases that sometimes comes to bear in a Home Depot store is that, you know, you, you think about it, every retailer wants to be up and operational. Um, we also want to be up and operational at times of natural disaster. So you think about an area getting hit by a hurricane or a tornado or something of that nature, you know, part of Home Depot's culture is to make sure we're there to take care of our customers. Um, so we take resiliency to a different level, not just from the sale, scale perspective, but as well as like what's core to, to us to be up and operating. Um, so distributed computing, definitely a core tenant of that, um, and always available multi-data center, um, a hot, hot environment, you know, it's it's paramount consideration mm -hmm. for us. Well, given that you use open source, uh, does that uh, does that lead to anywhere you're doing things to contribute back because you've got your special scale needs? I, I will tell you that, honestly, the contribution back is something we want to do more of. Mm -hmm. We have been a large consumer, and we feel very indebted to the community, and we feel like part of our identity that we want to change going forward is to also do more of the give back mm -hmm. um, side. So it's something that we talk a lot about um, and increasing that, not just within a few of our developers, but making it part of all mm -hmm. all our culture at scale. Okay, I'm just kind of expanding on it. I mean, how mm -hmm. in, gen in general, it sounds like Home Depot is pretty positive about open source, but in general, how, how are you viewing open source? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's absolutely a key part of our decision making. We feel like we, we you know, one of the phrases that I think we had in the talk this morning is we, we learn better with open source. Um, as we were prepping for this, we were also talking about how we feel the open source community also keeps us more connected. Mm -hmm. It's easy to kind of get in your own silo and do your own thing. Uh, so the learnings mm -hmm. that we have with the open source community uh, and sense of, like I said, learning better together, um, we, we hold a lot of reverence for the mm -hmm. community. Okay. You know, at a lot of companies when they're doing open source, anecdotally, we hear that it often comes from the bottom up from the developer mm -hmm. side. I'm almost hearing a bit of a different story with Home Depot. Can you kind of describe like how much is bottom up, how much was top down? On 
You know, I, I don't know. From my perspective, I will tell you that as we've moved our journey forward in our development methodology, empowering associates to bring forth the recommendation they feel like is the best one to solve the solution has definitely been a strong part of our message. Um, and so it more feels like we're meeting in the middle, mm -hmm. you know, on that than top down or bottom up. I think there's desires on both sides. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds like probably a pretty healthy environment. Um, for that. And you've already kind of addressed your, how you're contributing to op the open source community. Are you mm -hmm. doing anything kind of formal in that regard, or is it? No, I, I would say not yet. I mean, small pieces here and there, but um, one of our goals going forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you very much. Yeah.